wherever you work, just remember one thing. If you're not there, that company will keep going. That is just the way things go. You're just a piece of the engine that keeps it moving, but you're not the only thing that keeps it moving. 2020 is a really weird year in that the economy is doing all kinds of different things for different people. But one of the things I want to talk about is the concept of job security. I can give you my advice on this because I've already dealt with the impacts of one recession to my job back in 2008. I know that there has been a lot of layoffs and a lot of layoffs are coming at the end of the financial quarter. So for anybody who's dealing with that, I really do you know, want you guys to listen really quick. You have to always remember that you are your own brand. And this is a life lesson. This isn't like a YouTube lesson or anything like that. You are your own brand. You have to learn how to sell yourself. If you work for a company and you've been working there for a long time, I mean like five or 10 or 15 years for some people, right? And all you know how to do is that one job on that one thing that that one company has that is dangerous. That is very dangerous. That means that if that company decides they don't need that thing anymore because some new technology has replaced it, you've just become expendable. Technology gets old. It doesn't stay used forever. Some things do, but with this day and age, things get turned over very fast. And I feel like that's one of the things that scares people the most about the job market. It is, if I leave here, will I be able to get a job somewhere else? And you will, if you practice. And what I mean by practice is, you have to get used to interviewing. If you've never gone on the job interview, if you've never dealt with answering questions in front of a panel about who you are or how to sell yourself and all you've been doing is just kind of canning it, I can understand why you'd be scared because you don't really know who you are from a corporate standpoint to be able to market yourself. And marketing is such a big deal. It's a huge deal. It's all about marketing. Everything is about perception. If I believe you're the right person for the job, whether or not you actually are, you're probably gonna get the job. So let me tell you about my story and how I kind of learned this lesson the hard way. When I graduated college in 2006, I started working at a bank in the city and everything was okay. It wasn't a job that I necessarily went to school for, but it was a job that I had an internship for, so I kept it. Well, 2008 rolled around <laughs> and my company seemed okay. But like two years later after 2008's recession, about in 2010, I was told to come into the office and when, <laughs> when I tell you to come into the office and there's a meeting that pops up and you don't know who this other person is, chances are it's somebody from HR. So it's somebody you don't know. An impromptu meeting where only you and your manager and this other person are on it. So I, I show up at the office, me and my, my manager, because our company had just merged with another company in a different state, my manager was like in Arizona and I'm in Charlotte. So he got mad at me because I didn't come in to the office. I didn't realize I had to be there, but that was the first time he ever got mad at me. Um, but it's pretty impossible to manage somebody remotely. But yeah, so he got mad at me. I didn't show up, but I went later on that day. And as I walked into the room, there was a piece of paper and a lady I've never seen before on the desk. And that was my, my layoff information. 
basically. I've been there for about four years, so I gotta lay off and all the things that come with being with the company for four years. It was devastating for me. I was actually in the process of closing on a house within, you know, a month or so. And it shook me because I didn't have the confidence in myself, nor was I preparing for a job change. Even though I didn't like the job at all, I hated it. I just did it because they paid me. You know, I didn't really think about it. I mean, you're young and you kind of don't think about what you're doing and how long you're gonna be doing it. Sometimes you just get caught in that trap. But either way, I got my papers and I had like two or three months of uh, pay. Okay. Then I tried to find another job and I wanted to actually go and do a job that was based upon what I went to school for, which was programming. But in the world of IT, if you don't have any experience <laughs> in that field, you have to start at the top, at the bottom. And so I had to do that. I took a job through a connection and I got about $15,000 less annually than what I was making at my previous job. And it was a salary job. So I couldn't make more than 50. That was it at that time. And ironically, I really liked that job. The thing that I enjoyed doing most in school, which was being allowed to be creative and code for problem solving and stuff like that, I was doing it. So it was really cool. It got me up in, into the uptown area, the downtown area of Charlotte. And I was really enjoying the job. Only to be told within less than a year that I got laid off again. Yeah, so within like, within a year of getting laid off, I got laid off again because that's how that particular company rolls. But thankfully, there was another opportunity there. There was a management job. And I took the management job and what they did, or what they were able to do was essentially reduce their headcount because that's really what the layoffs are about. It's just to reduce headcount because salaries are expenses. And since somebody else had left and they recognized my skill set and they didn't want me to leave, they went ahead and moved me into a manager position. So I was a manager like uh, basically like by 29, I was a manager, managing people who were three times my age. It was very interesting. I learned a lot, not three times, but like, you know, twice my age. So as I'm doing that, <clears throat> I begin to notice something else that this company wants to send me to Atlanta because I'm doing such a good job. Well, at this point in my life, there's a lot of changes and I didn't know if I wanted to go to Atlanta, but I went ahead and took a trip down there. And unfortunately, where the company wanted to put me was not Atlanta, it was actually a place called Alpharetta. And you know, Atlanta's a big, big metropolitan. And when I got to the building and I saw how old it was and how it looked, I wasn't really feeling that. So I just went ahead and decided that I was going to find a new job. And this is where I started realizing something about my life. I realized that I need to learn how to sell myself. I need to learn who I am so that I can best capitalize on my value. Luckily, in the interview that I had, I was able to learn that. And with my next job, I was able to work my way up by impressing enough people with the skill sets that I've learned from being a manager and being technical and being able to communicate different things. So I kind of learned by listening to other people what it was they liked about working with me. I had to listen. And you know, when you work corporate, you get these things called like uh, performance reviews. If you listen to your performance reviews, if your manager is actually worth anything, you actually learn something and, and better yourself. But you, you can't be proud and not listen. You have to, you have to be open 
to what they're saying. So on the other side, now I'm in a situation where I'm conducting interviews and I'm looking at different things. And my company decides that, well, they got to lay off like 1,500 technical people. I wasn't afraid that I was going to get laid off, nor did I really care because I knew from interviewing people, from talking to enough people, I had that confidence in myself where I knew I could just go get another job. And so we had another baby coming and why not, right? If you're gonna lay off 1,500 people, other people who you work with or are great people, they're leaving, you might as well see what else is out there. So I dipped my toe in the water, I took a swim and somebody came and hit me with a great offer. I just couldn't refuse it. One of the biggest companies in the world. They're gonna pay me X amount of money. I was gonna be back uptown where I wanted to be. I was excited, so I took it. And I did not like it. <laughs> I didn't like it at all. But I say that to say this. It's not about what you do on a daily basis. It's about how you communicate what you do on a daily basis. I've had a lot of people give me training over the years, and a lot of that stuff doesn't, doesn't click until much later in life. Sometimes it takes some, some time to click, you know? And one thing you realize is that you gotta keep sharpening your knife. You gotta keep sharpening your knife, which is your, your skill, right? You have to not only know what's going on as far as what, what the corporations wanna hear and wanna see, because there's always something new. You have to learn how can I best sell myself? That's the key, guys. That's the key. You want to move up? You want to be successful in corporate America? You want to be able to say, oh, lay off says, don't bother me because I know I can go out there and get another job. You have to continuously work on marketing yourself and being prepared for the worst situation. Because when you're prepared for it, it's actually not that bad. It's not scary. You kind of welcome a change. And say, oh, this is a nice opportunity. Get a layoff, get uh, some months where I can actually like, you know, save some money or take some time off with my current salary and move on to the next thing. I think that's like an awesome situation out of a bad situation. So I don't want you guys to be too scared about layoffs. I just want you guys to take an interview of who you are and think about how can you prepare yourself to be marketed to or be marketable in 2020 and 2021 because the world or the economy is really like a pendulum. Yeah, it may swing one way, but it's going to swing right back the other way. As long as we have a nation, it's going to always do that. One of the things that I would recommend is go on an interview while you have a job. You may not you may not want to take that job, right? But if you don't interview, you're going to be freaked out about interviewing. You got to practice something to get good at it. Music's taught me that. Technology's taught me that. You have to practice to get good at something. You know, how can you expect to be a great interviewer and you, you had, haven't interviewed in 15, 20 years, you know? Like my dad lost his job. He worked at a place for 40 years and they laid him off right before his retirement. They did it on purpose, you know? So you have to like know, like what are you, how, how would he sell himself after being in some place for 40 years? What is he gonna say he's done? right companies market things to you all the time they say we're the greatest we're the most diverse we we have the best work-life balance x y and z these companies guys you in when you do an interview they're not just interviewing you you're interviewing them you're finding out what is it like to work here so don't go into it thinking that it's a one-sided thing and don't put yourself in a situation where you're desperate because you don't have to be desperate you can actually get a lot out of practicing and it really won't hurt you so that's my tip because I know a lot of people are about to go through some hardships but that's my tip for the day 
there's other things I can talk about. You know, being your own boss, creating your own company. But I think I'm gonna save that video for a different time. Because the thing I hear the most from my colleagues, the thing I hear the most from my friends is they want something from a job perspective, but the job won't give it to them. And they get upset and they just pout and they don't change. And they just pout for another year and it doesn't change. And they just pout for another year and it doesn't change. And so on and so on. A company's not gonna give you something if they don't have to. So that's just like a tip for me. And I hope that it helps you guys think about or prepare for anything that's about to happen. So yeah, remember, you can work 60 hours a week at a company, pour your heart into it, and they can let you go the next day because you can be replaced unless you own it and they can't fire you. <laughs>